Hi everyone, welcome back. It's another episode of Modern Mystics. Another sat sang with, with Andy. Yeah. One theme or topic that's been on my mind recently is just being very attentive to pulling back everything back to the mind, like pulling everything back to the mind. Yeah, it's like, I keep hearing like, God is everything. So it's like however we see our brothers or however we see our environment or anything is really how we see God. And, and just, the, just the importance of seeing like what is it that I believe and what are my thoughts and, and always pulling everything back and Yeah, you know, in the course, and in the Matrix, they both basically say, you know, it's like this world is a veil that was drawn over the mind, and it's really a deception. And part of that mind training is just watching and seeing all the ego thoughts and beliefs and constantly handing them over, and constantly pulling it back to the mind. So anything we believe about a brother is really what we believe about ourselves and about God. And that's why it's so important to, to just always be so attentive, like, where are my thoughts? Where, what am I believing right now? Am I tricking myself into thinking that someone's actually this way or something's happening this way that I don't have any say over it? in my state of mind. I feel like that's why the prompts are so important. Like I had this experience um, last night actually. And you know, it's like, it's like on the topic of compromise, it seems like in the world it's like, it's everyday life is just a thousand compromises and it's compromise after compromise after co compromise and then once you really you know follow the spirit's purpose for your life then you you seem to be in situations where it, you have to follow prompts and when you when the prompts come in is to follow them swiftly because the only reason you wouldn't follow a prompt is because you you actually want to believe whatever that belief is that the spirit is guiding you to, it's like, okay, let me give a, a practical example. It's like last night, a couple of friends invited us out to a restaurant and, 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 you know, they were, they invited us out and they were going to pay for us. So it's like, there's already, I could see the beliefs, like, you know, like reciprocity and, and this and that. And so those are the beliefs we really want to catch in the moment. And I could see that you know, when one of the friends was speaking, it felt really beautiful. And then at some point I was feeling a prompt to, to speak up, to, to say something like, hey, actually, actually, I feel like it's time to leave. You know, it's like, and, and you know, it's like, that's a practice against, that's a practice for no people pleasing as well. It's like in the community, we have no private thoughts and no people pleasing. And so that's part of the practice too, like speaking up, share how you feel. And then, you know, last night I could, it was like, it was like there was like this idea of like, wait, no, they, they invited you to dinner. You know, you, you can't just interrupt a conversation like that. And, uh, and, and yeah, you can see like, those were like the thoughts in the moment. It's like, you can't interrupt 
a conversation like this, you know, they invited you out, like, what is this? Like, you have to listen, just listen. Like, that was like, like the ego's people pleasing. And then the spirit is like, no, you, you, the guidance is to leave right now, so you, you need to speak up. And it's like the longer there's like a gap or delay between the prompt and actually moving on the prompt, it's like the more you reinforce the belief that are running there from the ego's thoughts. Like all those thoughts, it's like the longer you let those just fester in the mind when you delay on following the prompt. So that's why it's so important. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing to go. I have to speak it like right now. So it kind of like slices that belief in half and, and that's it. It's like, okay, that's the healing. You're following prompts, um, letting go of beliefs just like that and the mind's being healed. And then when there's a prompt though, and then there's some kind of delay or gap between uh, hearing the prompt and following it, it's like that delay is just reinforcing whatever belief is in the mind. And, and then that's the compromise. And then it's like the longer you allow that to go on, then actually the more angry you're gonna feel too because you're angry at yourself for the compromise. And so, yeah, I just saw that last night and I was like, wow, okay, this is, this is really a big lesson for me. And, and even, because I remember we were watching this movie, The Perfect Sense, and the audio's out on Spreaker. With, we watched it with David pretty recently. And, and there was just this part that felt so profound. It was like everyone was kind of losing their hearing, like they were having hearing loss. And at the same, like everyone in the world. And then at the same time, they were getting really angry. And David's, David was saying, yeah, you know, anger comes from compromise. It's like, it's like where when we hear the Holy Spirit's guidance, when he's giving us an answer or a solution so that we can be happy. And then when we compromise on that, on that accepting the answer, then we get angry because we're like angry at ourselves. Like, wow, I could, I could be happy, but I'm not following this prompt. I'm not accepting the happiness. So that's why it's so important just to move, just to move swiftly on, on following prompts. And that's why the guidance is so important. Like expression sessions are really helpful and expressing is really helpful too. But really the healing is in the guidance and is in the, is in the following the prompts, like the real, that's where a lot of the healing happens. And it's all because of this. It's like, you follow the prompts, you act on them, and then these beliefs seem to just wash away. Yeah, and at La Casa, La Casa de Milagros, we're, it's like a small group of us, like four of us right now, and we're doing a mysticalmindtraining.org. We're going through the modules and we're doing trust and inspiration number one right now. And, and yeah, there was just this really amazing part of that where it was talking about whatever you believe about your brother is what you believe about God. So, so if you feel like, you know, a brother is angry at you and then you feel like they're going to attack you. It's like any kind of anything like that. Like that's just one example. But you can always remember that whatever you think about your brother is what you think about God. So in that specific example, it's like it's really the belief that God is going to attack you. You know, it, it just runs that deep. But I just found that that's a helpful step to bring back the projection. It's like literally Every thought, perception, belief about the world is something that needs to be brought back to the mind and given over. Because really, it's, it's all lies. And in Dark City, I love that part where, um, I don't know if you guys seen the movie Dark City, but it's on MWG. And there's this one part where, yeah, basically, 
um, the main character is on this quest to find out the truth about the world. And like, he, he feels like there's just something wrong with the world. And he, he runs into this guy that's supposed to be his uncle. And in this movie, it's like these aliens or whatever, it's kind of like a symbol of the ego, have implanted all these false memories into everyone living in the city. So everyone's believing in all these false memories about their lives, about who they are, about everything. And, and they believe it to be true. And, and really, they're just memory impl implants. And so this main character, he, through his truth seeking, he finds this guy he thinks is his uncle. And then his uncle sets up a projector, actually, which <laughs> great symbol. And his uncle wants to show him some memories from childhood. And so he starts showing these, these uh, images on this projector. And on the screen, you see different like memories from his life. And then, and then there's one where there's some kind of fire that happened. And apparently, this is how the main character's parents died or something. And, and then in that picture, the main character has this scar on his arm. And, and all of a sudden, he sees that. And he tells his uncle, he's like, what is this? What is this scar? And his uncle's like, what do you mean? You got that in the fire. And then, and then the character, he just takes off his shirt. And he's like, and then you can see that he doesn't actually have a scar. And, and then at that point, he, he has this huge realization like, wow, these are all memory implants. Like, these are all lies. And he just says, like, it's all lies. And then he knocks down all the, all the images off the table and with the projector. And that was just a really powerful symbol. Like, I think we have that clip on mwg.org. And yeah, I always just really love that. Yeah, because last night, you know, I just had these thoughts and perceptions swirling around and and I was like angry with myself for compromising and not speaking up about how I felt and and all these beliefs about other people and, and this and that. Yeah. And then I just sunk in and Yeah, and out of my mouth I just started saying like lies, lies, lies. And that was just really helpful for me to, to remember, like, like remember, you need to bring all this back to your mind and remember what's false is false and what's true is true. It's like that constant forgiveness, that, that constant practice of forgiveness. And then, yeah, it's like, it's like a letting go of control. It's like, I feel like a lot of that control is even controlling how you see the world too. It's like, that feels like it's part of the control. It's like, no, I'm going to control how, how I see things. This, this is a finger, this is a wrist. This is an arm, whatever. It's like, no, I have control. I, I know what things are. This is a flower, you know, it's like. So the Holy Spirit's perception and the practice of forgiveness is part of this letting go of control. Because otherwise, we're just falling for, falling for what's going on in the mind and it doesn't feel good. And, and yeah, so. Last night, you know, a lot of you know who've been watching this show, but I had this like life, lifelong idol of a, of a Lamborghini. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, part of the whole, yeah, 
part of the whole control thing. And then last night I had this dream after, after that whole experience of lies, lies, lies. I had this dream where, um, I don't know, it's like me and my family were staying in this big hotel and then there was like a racetrack down below. <laughs> and it, I knew they were like renting out like exotic cars for, to take around the track. And I wanted to, to drive the Lamborghini. I've never driven the Lamborghini, so. But I looked at the time and it was like 10.30 at night and I was already feeling pretty tired. And, and so I talked to them and, and I was like, yeah, I wanna, can I rent a Lamborghini? I have a ticket. And they're like, you can, but it's gonna be a really long wait and it's already pretty late, but you can if you want. Like it already didn't feel good, right? So I was like, <laughs> Yeah, sure, I'll just wait. I'll wait. It's 10.30. Let me get a ticket. And so I waited a while, and and then uh, and then it was my turn. And yeah, I went in the car. I sat in the car, and my legs were so cramped. It's like, oh, this isn't comfortable. And like, I've never sit, sat in one before. So I, I sat in, and my legs were like so cramped like this. And uh, so I was like, okay, I was trying to adjust the seat, and you know, adjusted in different ways. And no matter what I did, like, it still wasn't comfortable. So it was already like this disillusionment happening with this idol. And then, and then I turn on the car and, you know, part of this whole uh, fantasy or whatever is the, the sound of the car. It's like, or whatever, you know, like a really nice loud noise, like crisp noise. And, and when I turned it on, it made like a, you know, like a, like a little mouse squeaking or something. <laughs> like it was like <laughs> it was like embarrassing. It was like nothing. I was like, wow, this doesn't sound that great either. And so <laughs> and so then what happened was I was like, okay, well, I'm ready to drive it around. And then uh, and then uh, right as I was ready to start driving, you know, there was like this big audience. And then some people in the audience for some reason, just start getting into a fist fight with each other. Like two people start getting into a fight with each other. And then all of a sudden, everyone's fighting with each other. And, and then it's like there's like this mob. Everyone's just attacking each other. And, and then I couldn't drive the car. There was no room to drive. It was like, can I was like, okay, it's canceled. And I just think that was really cool because I don't know, it was like, you know, it was part of the whole compromise and the whole, like, disillusionment. Like, wow, this idol was really not that great. Actually, it was terrible, not even not that great. It was just a terrible experience. And, and even the anger of compromising and going after something that I didn't even really want was portrayed in the audience who got angry for no reason, it's just start attacking each other and everything gets crazy. And so I, I guess this is like a phase of vivid dreams with a lot of symbols, because you know, I, I get these phases, seems like a lot of dreams, a lot of symbols, and then long, maybe a long period of, I can't remember any of my dreams, and now it's like, okay, a lot of symbols and stuff. So it's like, however the Holy Spirit can reach you, you know, might be dreams for you, might be music, it might be movies, might be all of them, you know, billboards, people, your own, your thoughts, like, I mean, they're all your thoughts, but the Holy Spirit can reach you in whatever way is most helpful for you. So it's just like being attentive throughout the day and being really present and tuning into the Spirit, and then you'll see the symbols like all around you. A really obvious one is when you're driving to this house on the highway, we have this huge billboard with Jesus' face on it. And just that, like no words at all, just Jesus' face and like a really mystical Jesus too, not like not like a you know, a very common one either. There used to be two billboards. One said something about like fear not, and then the other one just has no text. And now it's just the one with no text. Which reminds me, like, I was even guided not to 
bring my course book. And I, and I had no idea, like, what, what am I going to talk about? Like, really, like, you know, I'm in prayer all week. Um, just that's what we do. Like, you know, that's the practice of following guidance. It's like a continuous state of prayer. And, and I didn't get any downloads about the show. Like, and then, you know, like right before the show, I'm praying, and then uh, some things are coming in, and then the dream last night. And, but then I heard, don't bring your course books. So I'm like, okay, this is a walk of trust. And trust is a main, is a big theme too. Like, it's like the foundation of all this. It's like the foundation of the mind training. It's the foundation of the journey. You know, it's like you have to have this trust. And really, it's a trust with the Holy Spirit. But once you establish this trust with the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit starts guiding you to different places and people, it's like you have to trust all the symbols that the Holy Spirit is using for you as well. Like, if, you're, if you trust the Holy Spirit and you follow the guidance and you end up in a spiritual community, then you have to trust the the characters that the Holy Spirit has brought you to as well. And that goes with everything. You know, it's like whatever the life situation you seem to be in right now, it's like if you're following guidance and you're in that situation and you're going through healing, then you can trust that. And then, and then yeah, it's a, it's a huge walk of trust. And then it's a continuous prayer too. And then maybe you feel moved, and maybe you move somewhere else. And, and another really helpful prayer is, Holy Spirit, like make it obvious. You know, make it obvious what your guidance is. Make it obvious what your next step is. Like I remember with me when I gave my, my big yes to the Holy Spirit, and then I was just following the guidance, and, and there were just so many miracles. Once I let go of all these meaningless pursuits and complete waste of time, ambitions with the business and the Lamborghini and whatever when I just let all that go it's like all the miracles could start flooding in because I had space for them now and 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 yeah like make it obvious Holy Spirit what the guidance is like before I came to my very first retreat with Living Miracles it was a six day silent retreat I you know I was following the guidance going to different course groups watching a lot of David uh, MWG movies and then one day I just had this feeling like I'm supposed to travel I don't know I just had this feeling but I had no idea where like really I had no idea where I just had this feeling that I'm supposed to move travel something just travel and then so you know when we stay in this continuous state of prayer and always holding the purpose out front, like what Suzanne was saying, you know, like the purpose, that's so important. Everything we do is like, the purpose is the only choice. It's like, what's the purpose of every single thing I do? And if you want to be happy, you know, it's like the purpose is forgiveness. The purpose is the Holy Spirit's purpose. And that comes from the guidance, following the guidance. And, and yeah, so that day I had that feeling, I need to travel. And then I had been going to my aunt's, um, not, it's not really specifically a course group, but like a meditation group. And then at the end of the group, we always pull these like angel cards. And so we were passing them around and, and before it got to me, I just prayed and I was like, okay, Holy Spirit, I just want to pick whatever card is most helpful for me. And then I pick a card and it says, uh, time to go. And I was like, okay, <laughs> it's a very strong, obvious symbol. And I've been feeling that all day. Still don't know where though, but okay, this, I'm moving in the right direction. I'm getting more signs and symbols. And then, and then I think it was like the next morning or, or later that night or something where, you know, it's like using all the symbols that have been helpful for you too. So it's like, if you watch these shows, you know, if you're, if you're staying connected with living miracles, it's like that's a symbol that the Holy Spirit's using for your mind. So for me, when I had that feeling, I took that card. After that, I'm like, okay, where am I supposed to go? Well, I've, I love David's videos. I'm following this path, and he's like a way shower to me in uncompromising teachings. Maybe I'll check out the event page. And so I looked at the event page, and, 
And I had looked at it earlier, I remember, and like the only event that was coming up that could have been a possibility was a silent retreat. But I was like, no, 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 you know, those are boring and not talking, like what's the point? Like, I don't, and, then, and then I saw the, the location monastery, I was like, oh no. And then, and then Utah, I was like, no way, Utah. Like, I don't know, there are like all these associations and judgments, you know, like, who lives in Utah? Like, that's whatever, like, you know, those kind of thoughts. And <laughs> so it's like, those are all the things blocking us from the guidance, but it's also really helpful to see those, you know, see all the thoughts, notice them. Don't just brush them aside, like, like as if they're true. And yeah, I, I thought Utah's a weird state my whole life, you know, it's like, I'm going to keep believing that. It's like, no, hold on, wait, that's, hold on, that's like a belief, that's a judgment. Like, let me look at that, you know, let me give that over to the Holy Spirit. What is that? Let me do a spiri, whatever, whatever is helpful, instrument for peace, levels of mind. And so, yeah, I, I almost, you know, I just, I brushed that off for a little bit thinking like, yeah, that's not my preference, like, can't be the guidance or whatever. But there was still some kind of openness and, and you know, Nicholas, Nicholas was already living in community at that time. So that's like a mighty companion, you know, it's like know who your mighty companions are too. And if you don't have any, just pray. And if they don't show up, then you're not supposed to have any mighty companion characters in that moment. Maybe it's a silent retreat, whatever, silent hermitage for you or whatever. But I reached out to him and I said, hey, Nicholas, um, yeah, I don't know, I'm having these feelings and and what do you think about this silent retreat? Because like, I feel like I'm supposed to travel, but this is like the only thing available. What do you think? And, and, um, and at that point, I think I had given over some of these thoughts to the Holy Spirit. So I was getting like a stronger feeling of maybe it is the silent retreat. And then Nicholas was like, well, actually, it's full right now. And I was like, okay, it's full. It must not be that. <laughs> and, and then he's like, but, but, we'll, but we'll stay open. You know, you, like, you never know. And, and, you know, I was so tuned in and connected with the community um, through whatever avenues I could, through all the free shows and, and things. So I had sent the question in to David, and they had answered it on Francis's show. And, and David answered my question. It was something about something else, some kind of thing about my life, life situation. And right after he answered the question, he said, oh, and by the way, we have 20 more spots available in the silent retreat. I think we have plenty of space. I know we said it was full. And like, I didn't even mention that at all. So he just said that. I was like, wow, that's amazing. And so, and so yeah, then I, I was like, okay, message Nicholas. Nicholas was, was like, did you hear that? And I was like, yeah, I heard that. And then, and then I went there and, and yeah, that's just a good example of like, you know, following the spirit, following the guidance, make it obvious, Holy Spirit, follow the, the symbols, and somehow we're out of time, but that was like a, <laughs> that was just uh, part of the parable about following guidance and and really following the symbols. So so yeah, wow, that passed by really quickly. Okay, well, thank you guys, thank you for tuning in, and see you uh, not next Sunday. Next Sunday is the retreat about letting go of control, but then the Sunday after that. So thank you so much, and love you. <laughs>